so we call it email, and I'll, I'll go briefly to that why email is so important. Um, EDS, which is the um, disclosure system, JDB, which is a database of, of um, uh, decisions and judgments and motions. Um, then CLSS, which involves itself with translation issues. Um, Live Note, which is a special uh, software <coughs> for transcripts. Um, Ringtail, a special software for exhibits, for publication and management of exhibits. Case Map, which is a case analysis tool. Um, and Windows Desktop Search, which is now something that you will find on each Vista computer as your little search bar on, on, on the left, um, uh, which uh, helped us a lot um, in, in the beginning. Um, going through, through those tools one by one, the reason why I mentioned email is that um, there will be cases, or there were cases in, in our case, when sometimes you need to go back to an email which was sent three years ago which stated something, the prosecution stated something, which all of a sudden became relevant because they've changed their position, they've changed the way they plead JC, for instance, um, and you need to be able to go back to it. Therefore, you need to have a very good archive, and um, these tribunals, and you've heard uh, of various tribunals, they do offer email to you, but um, that email usually has a limited capacity, and we resorted to Gmail um, because it had big attachments and a lot of space. Um, uh, quick snapshot of my inbox will show you, and this is only uh, the inbox, if, if you look on the left you will see various subfolders, so not counting those subfolders, but just the core inbox, I have 4,376 emails which I've retained as relevant, I've, I've deleted probably twice as much, if not more, um, and this is again not counting everything which is in the folders on the side. Um, so you need to be able to search that, you need to be able to go back to these things very often um, because they're part of the whole history of the case uh, which, which becomes or might become relevant at, at some point. Uh, another tool that we use uh, is the EDS which is the electronic disclosure system provided by the UN and the ICTY. Uh, this tool is this database, online database, is uh, a mode through which the prosecution discloses documents um, to the defense. The prosecution has no access to it once it is disclosed to it, only defense does. And it basically consists of um, <coughs> packages that you will see now on your left, on the, on the left side of the screen, which you search. Um, most importantly, you download them and you spend hours and hours downloading them because the connection is very poor and the database is very slow. Um, and um, you use them also as a very powerful research tool because all these documents are, have, uh, are able to be text searched. I've just, uh, as an example, put the word armed uh, from the, the armed conflict uh, notion um, to, to show that there are 13, in a particular disclosure, there are 13 documents which have this word in them. So when you do your research in your disclosure, it is a way of finding uh, pieces of information relatively quickly. Obviously, once those documents are downloaded in the, your database, they also have to be text searchable in order for you to be able to find stuff. Um, a JDB, or a judicial database, is nothing but uh, a collection of motions um, or filings and judgments and decisions at the um, International Criminal Tribunal for Yugoslavia. Um, this is what the first page of, of the search looks like. Um, just for fun, and this is something that features uh, on the walls in the defense room at the ICTY. If you do a search for rights of the accused, uh, you get <coughs> no results. <laughs> um, this is obviously bug in the, in the database. When you do proper a proper search, this is what the results look like. But the defense room is full of, of the printout of the rights of the accused and no results found. Um, this is also a very useful tool, which is enabled, which has text searching, where it, where it takes you, jumps immediately to the page where uh, the term that you were looking for is, and enables you to prepare your findings and legal points um, and review case law uh, very quickly and very efficiently. Um, another tool that we used uh, was um, Case Map, and this is a tool which is used for um, actually case analysis. Um, it uh, provides what I was speaking to about uh, what I was speaking about earlier. Um, this um, interrelational management of various facts, documents, filings, issues, etc. And just as a brief snapshot of the documents section of this of this uh, software, um, you can see different data about a particular document, whether it be exhibited or not. 
uh, you can see that there is 15,281 document records. But on the left, you can also see that there is a special section for facts, there is a special section for your legal issues, um, and for other objects which we can call persons, organizations, etc. Um, another um, screenshot from this um, database is the filings um, screenshot, where you can see that filings, as we have done them in the case, um, had again different metadata to them, to them, but you will see the column called linked issues, where which enabled us to quickly go to a particular set of filings on any issue that we might have, say provisional release, what has happened with provisional release in the last three years, you just look at all the filings linked to provisional release and, and there you have it, if, even for the purposes of just drafting the procedural background in your new filing, you just have that data as, as, a, as a click on button. Um, because of the number of files that we had, over, over 1,600, obviously it comes very handy. Um, CLSS, very briefly, you've heard about translation issues, and these trials, bear in mind, are often not in the language of the accused, and every document needs to be translated. Um, everything that is said needs to be interpreted in various languages. Um, this, uh, at the STY, they have a translation tracking system where you send documents up for translation, um, to, a, to, a, uh, to a specific uh, service and then they come back to you um, after a while, they either reject it or accept it and translate it in a certain amount of time, but it takes time. So, uh, for instance, you will get your disclosure package today, but you will not actually know what's in it for about a month until a lot of those documents are first reviewed by somebody who speaks <coughs> the language, then sent for translation, and then they come back to you and then you actually realize that you have something fantastic in there, or that there's something very damaging um, in, in that disclosure package. Um, uh, another tool that we use uh, is LiveNote, which is a transcript management and publication system, which is um, a software used for um, immediate transcription of what said in the courtroom. But uh, in addition to that, it allows um, highlighting, it allows um, taking portions of the transcript out and assigning them to legal issues, adding notes to portions of the transcript, um, and going uh, pretty easily to any portion of the transcript that you've marked correctly, whether it be by highlights or by assigning a legal issue to it. I'm uh, showing you now a screenshot of, of a typical report where I think I again, I again looked for uh, and, uh, armed conflict, and then the software gives you all the instances in the 29,000 pages where this word or this term has been mentioned, and you can go to each one of them separately and review them and see if there's anything there that you need. You can also, through this software, because it's been integrated with another piece of software we want to talk about in a minute, go to any particular exhibit, any particular document which has been admitted uh, as an exhibit before the court. Um, this other piece, this other software is called Ringtail, um, and it is uh, also a management publication system. In short, in these trials, everything is electronic. Uh, paper is rarely used, so every piece of evidence that you want to show comes up on the screens. Before that, it's uploaded in a, per in, in a database called Ringtail. Um, this is what a typical screen looks like. On the left, you have various uh, search criteria, and this is one um, particular exhibit, P406, uh, so prosecution exhibit number 406. You see that it has two entries. One is the original, the other one is the translation, whatever, you know, from whichever language to whichever language, um, and metadata about it. Um, if you want to do a bit more complex search, you can also do that. So for instance, this looks for all the documents which are by their nature, which in the description have the word report and have been actually admitted trial and there is 2,725 results slash that by two, uh, divided by two um, <coughs> to discard the translation so uh, we're talking about uh, over a thousand documents just um, old report about something. You can open any of those documents and this is roughly what it looks like when you flick through pages, view it in court or, or transmit it to the public. Um, finally, um, and this is just something that we found very useful and that um, it's just a, a tip for any uh, practitioner. Um, now you have it obviously in, in any computer with a Vista system, you have it automatically. It is a little tiny application called Windows Desktop Search which indexes everything you have in your computer and allows you to search for any document which might contain any word or any term that you're looking for. 
um, uh, very quickly you can access it directly from, from, from the search bar. Um, the, the point of just quickly running through this is showing you that, um, uh, of course, in addition to this, there is a number of other tools um, which are available uh, to, to practitioners in these trials, but you have to rely on them. Uh, paper doesn't do it. It does do it for your uh, court actual advocacy. You will eventually show up in court with, with a bundle of papers. But in order to grasp the whole complexity of the trial, you um, can uh, you, you have to literally give up printing. Uh, you have to give up managing it in, in such a way. Uh, because um, you need to be able to have tools which um, provide you with a systematic, which with a systematic approach, which see uh, the bigger picture, and which allow you to analyze uh, and effectively uh, uh, store this knowledge. Um, in other words, um, what it usually is the practice: narrative summary, narrative summaries of, of, of witness testimony or word tables. Um, uh, scattered in, in various folders on your PC, simply do not do it for, for these complex trials. Thank you very much. Thank you, Taylor.